Seminole Nation and the Robert Hook Show is brought to you by Premier Sponsor, First National Bank of Eastern Arkansas. Bugmobile of Arkansas. H&R Block of Mississippi County. Ed Harshman and Harshman Reynolds. And Roller Swift Junior Home. Council member Tyler Dunnigan. Farm Bureau Insurance. Agent Grant Barnett. And now, the Robert Hook Show. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of the Robert Hook Show here on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, also, folks, something new tonight. You can now listen to the Robert Hook Show on Apple Podcast on your iPhone. Uh, we just ask you, when you get done listening, please leave us a review about the show. That is on Apple Podcast, Bobby. Moving up in the world, Apple Podcast, Apple Podcast, man. man we're YouTube, wow, and Facebook, and Instagram, ESPN next week. Got him. I get to ESPN next week. Apple next Podcast week. now. So, guys, don't let. I don't want to hear about how you cannot listen to the Robert Hook Show because we've got it on about every multimedia thing that Jay Jay Gonzalez can figure out. I mean, I don't know. I mean, tell me. Is there Tink, Tinker's else? all about it. He's messing with things, ain't he? I promise you. I I, I promise you that. Uh, so, uh, Coach Hooks, thank you so much for being here. We want to thank our corporate so, sponsor, First National Bank of Eastern Arkansas, for, for making the magic happen here on the Robert Hooks Show. Uh, Coach, thank you so much for taking your time out of, out of your everyday life. Uh, you know, we kind of tape these, these things sometimes late at night um, just because uh, I mean, we're going to let you get all your time with your, your players and get your th- stuff done there. Pull you away from your family a little bit. I, I know we're going to get some slack about that, but I appreciate you giving your time and coming out and being with us here on the Robert Hook Show. Yes, sir. Thank you. Let's talk a little bit about last week, Coach. Uh, the Blavel Chicken Saw has come to town. Uh, you're 0-1. They're 0-1. Somebody's going to get a win. Um, what a crowd on the on the home side. What a crowd on the visitor side. What a ball game. Uh, Seminoles come out and win that game last week, 33-18, to over the Blavel Chicken Saws. And, Coach, just a little bit about your scoring. Uh, started off right off the front end. Uh, they get the ball first, uh, make a make stop, get the ball back. First play from scrimmage, MJ Vance has a 53-yard touchdown pass to Greg Hooks. And, Coach, I mean, you want to take this, the win out of somebody's sales? Man, that just seemed like that right there just off the front end took the win out of Blavel sales. Right. Well, uh, you know, that – we had three plays that that we were gonna run. You know, we just didn't know what we were gonna do, just according to to the feel of the game. And uh, you know, we we make a big stop, and you know, I I, I changed the, the first play and said we're, we're gonna go ahead and take a shot right now. And uh, lo and behold, we we uh, we catch it and uh, catch him catch him slipping early. So uh, very, I mean, <laughs> great route, great pass. Decent protection. I actually had a linebacker come off the edge that that uh, rushed the throw, but but uh, MJ stood in there and, and made a great throw. Yes, sir. Greg, yes, sir. Greg made a great catch. Coach, you give the ball back to them. <laughs> uh, they ended up getting a big run by their quarterback, Northern. Uh, one of the Seminoles comes up, knocks the ball out. Trey Moore. Yes. Trey Moore uh, comes from from the left corner, backside corner, all the way to the to the right hash and, and makes. A huge play, you know that right there. Was was I think that's the play of the game. If you go back and look at all the the the, the plays that we made, I think that right there was was a huge momentum swinger, and uh, uh, I think it's the play of the game. Bobby, you come out, you hit the big shot on the front end, you get the turnover, and you're back in business once again. The confidence level has got to be huge for Osceola at that point. I tell you, it it, uh, it showed. They came out to play ball in that first defensive series uh, with Jamel Woods and and Mr. Northern at quarterback. You've got two powerhouses there, two guys that can really get after it and really go. And you go out there and you get a stop on three downs, get them off the field, and come back with the big play. I don't think those first two series could have could have went any better mm-hmm. if Coach Hooks had sat down and said, "This is what I want to see," and and drew it up that way. You're exactly so right. You, you do. You come out and make a statement early. 
uh, to let let Blyville know you're here to play, and and the ball game just followed suit from then on. Well, I mean, I mean, coach talked about it in the past. You want to come out, and the first thing you want to do is kind of like, I mean, not literally, but you want you want to hit yourself, you want to hit them in the mouth, it's just the way it is. You want to set the tone. You'll let them know this is our house, and nobody comes in our house and pushes us around. And that's exactly what happened on the very front end there. Uh, got two uh, two very good things. MJ Vance ends up um, getting a, t- a two yard touchdown run, putting us up thirteen to nothing. And at the end of the first quarter, coach, you led thirteen to nothing. Uh, we get into the second quarter. I mean, uh, we're knocking on the door right as the quarter ends. Uh, MJ Vance ends up having a seven yard touchdown run on a scamper. Um, it puts you up 19 and nothing, Coach. And, I mean, right then, at that point, you're in the driver's seat. But, you know, you know, just like I do, a good Blavel team, they're not going to go away. They're right. very well coached. Right. Uh, they got some good athletes. Uh, they come right back. Ends up number one, Jermail Woods has a six-yard touchdown run with about 738 left in the second. Coach, Jermail Woods is a hoss. <laughs> I mean, he, he runs the ball hard. And uh, just tell us a little bit about how you prepare to try to stop that young man. Well, uh, we uh, we changed a couple couple things, adjustments to trips. We thought that they would, would be in trips in the game because, you know, we, we team camp with them this summer, and, and uh, that is where they, they just killed us. They annihilated us, and we had to make some, some changes, some adjustments to that, and, and still with the adjustments that we made, he still uh, – made great plays and I told you last week that he he's a great football player and and the biggest thing of it all at the end of the game I, I mean I'll take we're going to take our hats off to the coaching staff and to those players I mean he, him and uh number six those, those guys were over there crying on the sideline so you know it it, it it's not just a game to him it, it meant something right. to them you know to lose that ball game and then those guys over there uh shedding tears you know they they left it all out there and my hats are off to the those those guys at, at Blavel playing a hard football game, and the coaches for for making adjustments and uh, you know making it a a very uh, interesting ball game. Yes, sir, uh, Bobby. Yeah, we, we, we they get the touchdown. They're up nineteen to six. Um, you know, Seminoles got to they kind of step back and say, okay, you know, they could they're gonna be able to move the football on us. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, Osola gets down there and. Uh, Runs one of them plays that you just don't see every day. And uh, Coach Hooks caught him off guard. It was a perfect pitch and catch from MJ Vance to Anthony Harris Jr., which is one of our sophomores. And we score and go up 26-6 to at that point. That seam route, tight end seam route that we've seen so often, you see it a lot in college football. It's very effective when, when ran the way uh, Coach Hooks ran it, take the motion and move everybody to one side and run up the seam. And I, and I got to tell you, you, you were talking about Jamel Woods and how you dealt with him. Um, the the guy goes over 100 yards. Uh, I think he's well over 100 yards in the game. Oh, yeah. But you never felt like he got going. He didn't break off the huge runs right. that we're used to seeing from that kid. Right. Uh, and, and he is I, – I, I believe he's a D1 talent. I think the kid is – is uh has the ability to to play you know on what level he wants to but you just never felt like he got control of the ball game uh you knew he was going to get yards you knew he was going to make plays um and he and he was as advertised one one right. person very rarely brought him down uh Osceola right. ran to the ball well uh, they flew all over the place you can't say enough about Trey Moore um some some of the plays that Trey made on the outside to, to force the action back into the interior and let, let the linebackers mop that stuff up. Uh, we're, we're just Mr. Dependable. He, he, he right. does his job. Right. Um, so I, I think that, you know, the, the first half was, again, played about as well as anyone could have expected that ball game to be played from OCL standpoint. I agree. Right. I agree. So, tw- Coach, you're 26-6 at the half. Uh, you got to be feeling a little good about, about what's going on there in the first half. I'm sure you made some adjustments. They were making some adjustments. But coach, for some reason, that third quarter just seemed like it was a different ball game. Um, you know, me and Bobby got to talking about it on the on the live show. Um, I said, uh, I wonder if Coach Hooks went in there and ran them kids all during halftime because Bobby the the <laughs> the, the laundry was flowing in the third quarter. I'm talking about hold after hold after hold. Then you had. You had false starts, you had Cramp. sides, cramping going Cramp. on. So I mean, we coach, we were we were just talking. We said, I, I don't. I guess Coach Oak just went in there and just ran them all through halftime because they look they look tired. I, they mean, did. I mean, and I, I know it just you know from the looks of it, and it could have been other things. But 
I thought, man, we just we, – we looked tired in that third quarter. And, um, I mean, you come out in the third quarter, Coach, 6-0-3 left in the, in, the, in the third quarter. Jeremiah Northern has a four-yard touchdown run. So, they come back and hit you for 26-12 at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you, you finally get out of that, that third quarter, that treacherous third quarter. We didn't score at all. You get to the fourth quarter, very beginning of the fourth quarter, uh, Jamel Woods has a has a seven yard touchdown run, and all of a sudden it's twenty six twenty. I mean, here they are. I mean, they're right there, they're right there on you. And uh, I'm sorry, it's twenty six eighteen. I apologize, yeah. yes sir. Mm-hmm. And and I'm thinking, man, we're, we're we're like, man, we gotta we gotta turn it around. But that's exactly what you did because uh, the Seminoles mounted a, a big big offensive plan, offensive plan there in the fourth quarter. MJ ended up having a two yard touchdown run with three fifty three left in the ball game. That made the final score thirty-three to eighteen. And coach, uh, it's been a long time since we've been blah. I mean, I, I, I hats off to you, coach and staff, and and every, all the kids. Every year we've been close, um, yeah. but finally they got over the hunt with blah this year. Uh, blah has got a good football team. They do. And uh, but uh, Bobby, just look. Let's look at a few stats here on this game. Uh, for Osceola as a whole, we were eight for twelve through the air, one hundred and fifty-six yards, two touchdowns. Rushing, we had 39 carries. 39 carries. That's that's a lot of carries. Uh, but that's quarterback running, too. And that's not all just handing the ball off. But 39 carries, 245 yards, three touchdowns. Total yards on the night, 401 yards. Now, Coach, I did this just to – you know, we talked about against Valley View that some just didn't look like look like ourselves. You know, we, we shot ourselves in the foot with turnovers. Right. We had zero turnovers against Blyville. Uh So, that was cleaned up, and you see the difference. But looking at comparison – 150, 156 yards through the air against Blyville, 153 yards against Valley View. So, you're close, very close right there. 245 yards on the ground against Blyville, 44 yards on the ground against Valley View. 197 yards against Valley View, you got 401 yards um, against Blyville. So, it shows you right there that a lot of things were cleaned up and you got a lot of things accomplished to show that your your offense got to clicking. Can mm-hmm. you talk to us about a little bit about just some of the changes maybe you made or just some things that happened between the Valley View and Blyville game that allowed you to, to get things differently? Well, one, one plan is, you know, we, uh, we're we not as, as as deep as we were, so we wanted, wanted to run the football a little more and uh, challenge the offensive linemen. And, uh, you know, those guys uh, answered the call. Uh, we you know, we were able to, to pound the football a little bit and then, and use a little more clock and, and right. preserve our our guys that that play both ways. So and uh, you know it we we still had some things open in the past game, but uh, you know when when the run game is working the way that it was, it, it was no if it's not broke, don't fix it. Uh, I agree. So and and even in the third quarter, third quarter we st- still broke some long runs. You know, just they they got negated by some some holding penalties right. and uh, you know. Uh, couple of them were, were actually holding them and a couple of them not, I'm, I'm still searching for but uh, <laughs> that that's just that comes with that comes with the game and like I say we want to have a spot the ball mentality well and on that last drive we actually had a, a penalty on that drive and and, and we're able to still right. get a, a, a big first down uh, throwing the throwing the back shoulder over there to, to Greg and that was uh, that was a huge first down sir you know what I what I noticed in the differences in those two ball games and uh, the the traditionalist or the you know the traditional football method is you run the football to set up the pass you you know as coming from a from a seventies and eighties viewpoint of that would you run the football run the football pound set up play action and then try to stretch the field and, and the game has changed so much and and when uh, uh, the first time I'd really ever heard this was from Coach Bobby Petrino at Arkansas was we're going to use the field and, and stretch the field to set up the run. We're going to get the ball out, get it out quick. And, and now the the passing game is so much an extension of the running game that that you use the tunnel screens, the bubble screens, the the flares right. to the running backs to, to move in space. So what I thought was big in this ball game was that first play – Stretch the field. Right. You 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 know you can't. Valley View st- stood there with nine in the box most of the <clears> night, and, and they they forced you, you know, into a situation where you were going to have to throw the football, and just didn't make those connections like we did against Blyville. Right. Uh, but once that ball went downfield, 
those safeties have to back up. Back those up. corners have to back up. The linebackers have got to take a step back. That's one of the things the seam route does is that pulls the linebacker back. He's got to follow that tight end now. Right. Uh, and those RPOs that you like to run, they open up. Right. And and so I thought that was, to me, the difference in the ball game was the ability to stretch the field. I agree. No doubt. No doubt about that. I agree 100%. Uh, I was looking at Blavel's stats. They had 35 attempts, 251 yards. Uh, on rushing, uh, passing the ball, they threw three times for 13 yards. Three times in the air, 13 yards. What they got? Total of 279 yards total. Here's a stat that mm. it, it st- sticks out to me. One Jermel three. Woods. Yep, yep. That's right. Jermel Woods. 29, 25 rushing attempts for 188 yards. Folks, uh, if you didn't see the game, you can go back on YouTube or Facebook and watch that game. Uh, Jermel Woods is a talented talented individual so I mean all of them are I'm not trying to just single out one but that young man can flat out run the football uh, between him and Northern they can flat out do it coach just a little bit on individual stats <laughs> this is something else now remember that 279 total 279 is what Belival had total MJ Vance quarterback had 17 rushes for 142 yards three touchdowns in the air he was 8 for 11 for 156 yards two touchdowns for a total of 298 yards 298 yards from your quarterback. Blavel's whole team at 279. So that tells you exactly how much your quarterback was really uh, locked in in that football game. Right. He's a heck of a ball player. Uh, but, I'm, Coach, let me just say it real quick. Guys, we got Coach Hooks and MJ after the game, and we talk to him about – we get him on the post game. Uh, we're interviewing him. At first, MJ tells me, I, I, Michael, I, I don't have to talk. I said, no, come on, come on. Come on, your totals are not. You need to tell the people about how you feel. But but it wasn't me. It wasn't me. I said, well, yeah, it was you. I, I watched you all night long. No, but it, but it wasn't me, Michael. It was my offensive line. And I thought, man, that right there told me everything, which I already knew. I've had him since he was a puppy. I mean, that's why I call him. Every our pups when they were little. Mm-hmm. But that told me everything I didn't know about MJ Vance right there. He didn't want to come talk to me in the post game because it was his line that gave him 142 yards of rushing. It was his line that gave him the time to throw 156 yards in the air. It was his receivers that stood out there and caught the ball for him. It was all of them that made the blocks. Coach, that's a humble young man. Uh, and from me talking to him, you know him, you talk to him every day. You, right. you, you, you coach him. But after hearing him talk like that, I thought, man, that's, uh, that's a good individual. That's all I can say. He's a, he's a good kid uh, for him to say things like that. Uh, Greg Hooks had a huge 53-yard touchdown pass. Trey Moore had a 19-yard pass from my, others. Anthony Harris Jr., your sophomore, had a 26-yard touchdown pass. Brandon Johnson had a huge 31-yard run. Rod Moore, coach, I told you this. I'll tell you again. Rod Moore ran hard. Rod Hale. Hale. I say that. I'm sorry. I say Hale. that all the time. I apologize. <laughs> Rod Hale had so much poise. He was he wanted to run the football, and you could tell it, and it helped you out, helped you out so much. Yeah. So, just a little bit, Coach, just real quick about your quarterback uh, before we wrap this up and, and talk a little bit about your receivers and your running backs. Just just let us know a little bit about well, uh, right on. All week, he, uh, MJ had to hear about how bad uh, that, that we performed. And, uh, you know, he, sometimes you, you get tired of hearing that. He, uh, I knew that he was going to have a good game from uh, from the Monday, that the Monday practice. I, I said, he, he's going to be he's going to be okay. I wasn't worried about him, and uh, you know, if we had to bring Dunn in, we, we read and Dunn come in. Yeah, he did, and, and gave us some some good reps. So you know, we're, right now we we feel pretty good at at the quarterback position. AJ Harris is a guy who can who can play quarterback also if we need. So we uh we we feel comfortable about that. And Rod Hale come in and, and run the football like a maniac. Uh, yes. He uh you know he likes to call himself Alvin Kamara. So I love he, it. <laughs> he uh. He he did some good things uh, in the in the run and pass game. You know, we we call a screenplay to him. He catches it and you know it, it gets called back. But he had a huge run did. on on that, and uh, uh, I was very very proud of of his efforts. You know, the thing that he has to do is just get better when when he didn't have the ball in his hands. So if uh, we'll continue to work on that, I I think uh, his future is, is bright. And Brandon Johnson, Brandon Johnson ran the ball hard too, and uh, that the 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 botch snap that he picked up was was a huge, huge first down, and 
You know, he a thirty one yard gain on that. He did, yes sir. It, it was it was huge. So was. I was I was proud of the way that, that we ran the football and uh, that the way that the offensive line uh got off the ball and, and, and finished the football game. Bobby, anything else? Uh you the- know, we, we had five touchdowns. MJ has his hand on the ball in all five. Exactly right. At some point he's got his hand on the ball in all five. Uh I think that that's a testament to, to leadership and like you said, preparation. Um what I what I really saw uh, that stood out to me too that was different from the Valley View game is there there was more of a, a team play atmosphere. The guys seemed to work together so much better. Uh, the line was was impressive at times. There 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 were some times when there was there was penetration by Blavel, but right. you're going to have that through a ball game, the ebb and flow of a ball game that happens. But overall, what I saw from the offensive line was a good push. There was a good push on every on every play that I saw. They pass protected well. Um, I saw one play where Brandon picked up a blitzer. He, he's he's back in protection, picks up a blitzer, and, and gives MJ time to throw the football. So all of those things work together to to make a successful night. Uh, we talked about the third quarter woes in the beginning of the third quarter, and 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 I know the kids were hydrating. We saw them hydrating all through the first half, but we did see some cramping issues. And and I and I pointed out I think on the live stream that that Greg was cramping man he was he was stumbling and yeah, and walking stiff legged and and uh, but he <laughs> he he wouldn't take himself out of the ball game. No. Well, I, I and, told him I told him I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say I want everybody to see yep. to see that you didn't prepare yourself you didn't yep. hydrate properly and you know just just kind of messing with him but he you know he's still out there and uh, that's hard come back on the sideline yeah. and did what he had to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, come back on the field and do what he had to do. So, you know, very proud of him also. I, th- I thought Greg showed I – I think he showed a lot of character there and a lot of heart. Uh, and, and and even though – and they're painful. Man, they're painful. I know they were in his calves. Uh, but, but he would get himself set, get on the line, run his route, block his man, whatever he had to do. So, I think that's testament to what that – to what your older kids did. Uh, yeah. I just overall – I thought the game plan was efficient. I thought the offense uh, worked very, very well. And, and against an offense like Blyville puts on the field, I don't know that you could knock your defense for how well they played. Uh, they tackled well. Um, I, did. I, I didn't see anything. I didn't, you didn't have any glaring miscues. Mm-hmm. Nobody busted a coverage that I saw. So, uh, I thought I, just just a fine ball game all around. I agree a 1,000%. And, folks, that is the recap of the – Osceola Seminoles versus the Blyville Chickasaw. Seminoles moved to one and oh, one or two and sorry, one and one on the season after that win against the Blyville Chickasaws last week. What we'll do now is give our sponsors a chance to get a word in here. Uh, folks, this does not happen without our sponsors. I uh, want to thank all of our sponsors very much. You're going to get a word from them here and then right back. We'll talk about this week's game with the Gosnell Pirates. We'll be back in just a minute. First National Bank of Eastern Arkansas is the official bank of the Seminole Nation and the Robert Hook Show. Our premier sponsor, First National Bank of Eastern Arkansas, is Eastern Arkansas's largest independently owned bank. First National Bank of Eastern Arkansas specializes in all your banking needs, including personal banking, online banking, business banking, savings accounts, loans, CDs, and IRAs. Go down to the First National Bank of Eastern Arkansas, speak with President Greg Reese and Teller Supervisor and Loan Processor Taylor Lucius for all your banking needs. First National Bank of Eastern Arkansas is a proud sponsor of the Osceola Seminole Nation and the Robert Hook Show. First National Bank of Eastern Arkansas, member FDIC. Bugmobile of Arkansas, located at 408 South Walnut, Osceola, specializes in pest control and termite control for both residential and commercial properties. Owners Oscar and Jade Gonzalez would be happy to come out and give you a free estimate, and you can also contact Bugmobile at 870-563-6811. Bugmobile is a proud sponsor of your Osceola Seminoles and the Seminole Nation. H&R Block of Mississippi County is a tax preparation and financial service located at 2981 West Kaiser in Osceola. They can be reached at 870-563-5710. H&R Block of Mississippi County is a proud sponsor of the Seminole Nation. Ed Harshman and Harshman Rentals located at 202 West Johnson in Osceola can meet all of your residential and storage rental needs. Harshman's has apartments and housing located throughout Osceola and Mississippi County, both furnished and unfurnished, available for rent. 
You can contact Harshman Rentals at 870-563-3694. Ed Harshman and Harshman Rentals are a proud sponsor of Osceola Seminole Athletics and the Seminole Nation. Roller Swift Funeral Home of Osceola is a proud sponsor of the Seminole Nation and Osceola Seminole Athletics. Located at 2173 U.S. 61 South, Roller Swift Funeral Home specializes in funeral services and helping families with the costs associated with them. For more information, contact them at 870-563-6578 and speak with David Tucker. Roller Swift Funeral Home, with all our respect. Council Member Tyler Dunnigan is a proud sponsor of the Seminole Nation and the Robert Hook Show. Tyler is working for a better Osceola with real commitment and real results. Council Member Tyler Dunnigan for a better Osceola. Farm Bureau Insurance of Osceola and Agent Grant Barnett proudly sponsor the Seminole Nation and the Robert Hook Show. Contact Grant for all of your auto, home, and life insurance needs. You can see Grant at 3125 West Kaiser in Osceola and contact him at 870-563-6561. Farm Bureau Insurance and Agent Grant Barnett are proud sponsors of the Seminole Nation. And welcome back to the Robert Hook Show. Um, thank you again for all the sponsors that you just heard from. Without you, this does not happen. We really do appreciate it. Coach, one and one on the season. We're moving forward to, to uh, week two, as they call it, after you play in week zero and week one. But week two, uh, you play the Gosnell Pirates. That's a county, another county foe that, you know, you play Bly when I were playing Gosnell. Uh, got some success. Did win that game last year against Gosnell. But uh, Gosnell's got a new coach, new look. Uh, they're going to be different. Different than we've seen them. Uh, used to, you look at Gosnell, Bobby, wing T. Guess who's got the ball? That's how they ran it. And most of the times, Gosnell ran that wing T to the T. I mean, <laughs> no pun intended, Coach. But, uh, I mean, they ran it like it wasn't – like it was like, – like they invented it. I mean, it's like they invented it. Um, but this time, they got a new coach. That's Lewis Ernest uh, coming over from Wynn. Mm -hmm. um, it's his first season at Gosnell. Um, they are 0-2 on the season. They took a loss week uh, zero to Nettleton and week one to Kennett, Missouri. So they're going to come in 0-2. Um, but I promise you, folks, I promise you, this is going to be a good ball game. And the reason why is when Osil and Gosnell gets it teed up, it's every man for himself. It's going to be a good one. Um, Coach, uh, talk a little bit about the Gosnell Pirates. I know they're coming out of that wing tee going into a spread. Well, uh, first off, this is a, a very scary game because those guys come off a uh, – Two bad losses, and uh, Coach Coach Ernest and I have I have a little history. He was a, a grad assistant coach when I when I played at Southern Arkansas, so I know that uh, he knows his stuff, and uh, and he he's gonna do what it takes to rally his troops to to play hard against us uh, to to play great football, and and we also team cap with him in the summer, so we're athlete for athlete they match up with us well, and. Uh, we're we're expecting nothing but a hard fought ball game, you know. Though they have uh, the quarterback Cooper, uh, who's who's his uh, his son, and twenty four uh, Jadarian Young, uh, number number one. You have a part the party kid, uh, number five Kennedy kid. They they have a lot of a lot of weapons. Number eighty eight uh, Drew Reynolds. He he's a good athlete, you know. They they match up. They have some guys that are very scary that that can make. Make big plays, and uh, you know they 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 actually can they run the football well. Uh, we're, we're you know we're gonna have to prep and make sure that we know where twenty four is, and and uh, you know they run a lot of different formations also. So you know we have to be make sure that we're able to line up. You know, being part uh, part of of having a good defense is being able to line up. So if, if we have to know that where to line up at all times. You know, so we're working on that on formation rec and. Uh, Biggest thing is, is is we're expecting a hard fought ball game from them, and we're expecting them to be really, really good. Uh, the the previous scores does not matter, but I think it's going to be a good good ball game. Coach, they like to throw it more. Or are they balanced on offense? Well, they 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 do it both. They they they're pretty balanced. I think on the breakdown we had them uh, 48, 52, 48, uh, 48 percent run, fifty two percent pass. But for Gosnell, that's that's a 
hundred eighty degree turn yeah. to see them yeah. throw the football I that much. You. Yeah, they so they 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 are balanced and uh, they they do a pretty good job of, of mixing it up. Do a good job of making everything look the same. You know, they they make their passes look most of them, with the exception when when they're in uh, their quads look. They're in their heavy sets. They they make the run look just like the pass. So you up front, you're not gonna be able to to distinguish what they're doing, which means the secondary is gonna have to make sure they get their eyes out of the backfield and and know where those receivers are. Uh, they they do they do a good job. Turnovers have hurt them in the in the the last two games. So uh, they move the ball. Moving the ball is not a problem. It's just. Uh, They've they've turned it over at at uh, unfortunate times and and has caused them to to you know get out of whack. Well, I, I tell you, me and my son talk about this all the time. It seems like the game before us, a team will just fall apart, but every time somebody plays the Seminoles, <laughs> it's lights out. So so uh, I, I promise you, this week guys will be ready to play Osceola, and yes. I know Osceola will be play, ready to play them. It's going to be a good one, uh, Bobby. What are the Seminoles going to do this week? to continue to have the success they've had, you know, in the previous week. It's easy. Exactly what they did last week. Well, Come out well prepared, focused, uh, and and make the plays, execute the offense, execute the defense as the game plans lined out. Uh you you knew last week what you were looking at. Uh, I know coaches has looked at the film and he knows exactly what he's dealing with this week. Uh, I think that that leadership that you saw from from Trey and Greg and MJ and Rod has got to stay there. Um, the, you know, there the are different kinds of leaders. I see that some of that out of Dan Newsom too, uh, when they're out there talking to the younger kids. Um, you know, it's it's just got to stay there. You 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 know, the hardest thing to do is is maintain that focus, especially for young kids. You got 15, 16, 17 year old kids out there playing football. Uh, you get tired. You lose focus. I think that's what we saw in the third quarter last week, and and I think it's it's. It's composure, it's leadership, and it's knowing where you're supposed to be and when you're supposed to be there and executing the game plan. So yep. uh, I, I think that's what you do. Talk to us a little bit about the weather. I mean, we're in the high 90s all week long, and you're looking at the same thing on Friday. Right, yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's supposed to be the same exact temperature that it was today. I think the heat index got up to 105, 106 today. So um, we we're uh we, we ran them pretty good and you know, hopefully prep. Biggest thing is is putting that that rehydrating, you know, and that that's what we're preaching right now. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Uh, I think that that's what happened to us last week. We didn't replenish our bodies, and and uh, it showed in the in the second half. So. Uh, it's, it's one of those things where you have to really, really work on taking care of your body on and off the field. So uh, that, that's what we're harping on, and we're, we're going to see how it goes. Bobby, we had a heck of a crowd in the home stands. I promise you uh, Goslin's going to bring their fans. I promise you. Goslin travels well. They always have. Uh, it, it did. It was nice to look down into the stands and see a full house. I think you got to pack it out again. Got to. Uh, it's, it's time to get loud and – uh, you know, we're, we got conference season coming upon us. And, uh, you know, the Seminoles came out and, and set a standard last Friday night. And, and I think that's where we got to keep going. They need that fan support. It, it, it means – and if you haven't played, when you're, when you're down there uh, on that field and you hear those people and they're behind you and they're, they're cheering you on, uh, it, it means the world to you. And, and most people that, that were ever around – Luxor Athletics knew my mother and, and knew that she made sure I knew she was there. Uh, always heard her. But that means something to a kid. Uh, and, and the community support and getting behind these these young men is is very important. No doubt about it. And, uh, folks, that is the scouting report on the Gosner Pirates. Um, Bobby, know a lot of people from Gosner. Mm-hmm. You know, we talked a little bit about some of our friends from Blyville. We'll, uh, we'll see some of our friends again this week. I know uh, Lauren Jeremy Davis from up there. Uh, yeah. I've known Laura and Jeremy a long time. Uh, one uh, the daughters, a uh, uh, cheerleader for the Gosnell Pirates, mm-hmm. and uh, they have a uh, kid that plays baseball and and some other uh, sports. Uh, very good people. Uh, but uh, I mean, you got some law enforcement guys used to be in law mm-hmm. enforcement that's that's on that team. And uh, yeah. I tell you what, uh, I look forward to seeing all of our friends from Gosnell down here this Friday night. Uh, it's going to be a fun atmosphere. It always is. Um, we'll shoot some fireworks. Hopefully, hopefully. Hopefully we'll run out. That's the main thing. And uh, 
And uh, we look forward to a big night uh, this Friday night in Osceola as your Seminoles take on the Gosnell Pirates. Game time will be 7 o'clock. Mm-hmm. And uh, like I said, we look forward to having everybody here this Friday night. Folks, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, drop us a comment. Let us know if you'd like to see anything different. Um, we're going to do some things different. Um, coming up uh, you know, next week's show, we're going to pick the conference. We'll have a conference uh, uh, pick them between me and Bobby here. And uh, Coach ain't going to be able to pick. He, he'll give us some maybe some, some analysts, a little bit of insight on the games of the conference schedule. But me and Bobby's gonna pick it, and we're gonna try to see who uh, see who can come out with the best score at the end of the year. Uh, we'll also maybe do one or two three A games that we look as important games uh, down the road, and just kind of see uh, if we know what we're talking about. Bobby, I, I have a lot of people say, "Man, we listen to y'all, but we don't think y'all know what you're talking about." So we'll they might be right. We'll, <laughs> we'll try to prove them wrong. So just leave us a leave us a comment on Facebook to let us know at least that you're listening. Uh, if we can do anything different, or uh, if you'd like to see anything. Uh, to enhance our, our time here with Coach Hook. So, same thing on YouTube. Man, hit the subscribe button, please. Um, that lets us know that we have people that are watching the show. Um, Seminole Nation page, you can do that on both of them also, on Facebook and YouTube. Please hit the likes and subscribe to them also. Um, as we talked to you about right here at the very beginning, we're on Apple um, Podcast, Podcast now. You can listen to that on Apple Podcast. Uh, and when he first said it, I thought, man, we're moving up in the world, Bobby. Have a podcast. Um, you know, like I said, I mean, we may have to be on the uh, SEC Nation or something next week. You never know. I mean, <laughs> you know, we uh, and we're a hot commodity. Bobby. We're doing good. We're doing good. I think at one time, Jade, you correct me. We were over three hundred viewers at one time last week on the live stream. Right there, that's three hundred people that are watching that that broadcast. That uh, you know weren't in the stands, but they're they're tuning into Seminole football. I think we've reached a little over 10,000 people, possibly. Yeah. I, I, um, so that's that. that's good stuff, and, and it, it's testament to the product on the field and testament to what we're trying to do here and, and bring some bring some insight out to Seminole fans and let them, let them see the inside of the program just a little bit. Hopefully we'll have some players here. We've got a, we've got a few special things coming up. Yeah. Um, Yep. That that we'll do and and we still I don't have you you did tell coach right did you tell I coach? think the coach knows okay I was just he kind of got it out of me what we're gonna do uh, he he sworn to secrecy so well that's that's uh, good that's good know, that's, but hey I'm gonna tell you he anybody knows Robert Hooks he's not all about the hoopla folks he he just wants to play football he that's that it. stuff that surrounds it he's not I've got I, I go out there all the time I know when he sees me coming out on the field he goes oh man what kind of <laughs> ideas Michael got next. Because I mean, I've always got ideas of different ways we can do things to just to get the the spotlight on on our, our program, let everybody know how good of a program we've got. So, but and this idea floated for better part of a year or more. I think we talked about how we could do this and what we could do to get it done. I think it means something to the community. I think it's it good does. that people can hear from their football coach. You know, people that that uh, are inside or are involved in the school system that see coach hooks can talk to him and they get some of that, some of that information. But the, you know, the average guy may not have the ability to go out and do that. That's right. Um, then we have some elderly fans. We have, we have some, some folks here that have been Seminole fans for years that don't have the ability to get out there and see these things. So hopefully they're tuning in and they're getting, uh, getting their Seminole uh, fix from, from what's what we're able to put out and, and uh, you know, feed that, uh, to them so that they can stay involved in the program. Right. And and, that, and it is an interactive experience. You just get on there and type a comment. You know, if you've got something you want us to ask coach, if you have a question about about something that happened in a ball game or something that we've done or or some change or something, send us a message. That's right. Give, give, give us a question and we'll ask it to the coach. That's right. And and see if we can get a, a good answer out of him and, and – uh, Involve I mean, our fans that way. As long as it's sports related, and we don't want to do no truth or dare stuff or nothing like that. I don't know. I, I think it'd be funny. Oh man! I, but I, I really think. See, we got him every week right now, Bob. But we start asking some of these well, crazy questions, yeah, we may I, lose it. You know, I've been thinking about what what I could do to keep him here. Oh well, then you, you know. So and him so he, he's he's in trouble because I know his family. Oh, so God. so I I know some I know some ladies and and some folks that that would probably be able to help us guide him back into the into the studio here and, and get him sit down. Yes, yeah, so. we're in trouble. Well, I'm I'm gonna tell you somebody 
that 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 if we don't keep happy, we won't get him anymore. And that's his that's his beautiful wife because we're taking him away from her at this time. He, mm-hmm. She already lets the, the school have him all day long and on Saturdays and Sundays. Yeah. And, and then here we come along needing a couple hours at night. No, 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 no. We're going to keep find a way to keep her happy to keep him here. And uh, one way would be to hurry up and finish his show up so he can get on home to her. <laughs> um, but, folks, don't forget, homecoming week, we've got a big, big surprise. We'll let you know the week before. I'm going to make you wait. I'm going to make you wait on it because it's big. I'm talking about big. Homecoming week, we, the the – Robert Hook Show has got some big plans coming for you. So, y'all just hang on there. Um, hey, if you got any questions for the coach, you can throw it in the comments down low on Facebook. If you like the show, hit the like button. If you don't like it, just act like you do. And if uh, you hit got the anything, button anyway. Yeah, hit the button anyway. And if you got anything that you want to see differently, if you something we can add, let us know. We're going to have some sponsors coming on in the next couple weeks that, uh, that are sponsoring this huge show. I'm just going to list them right now, and we're going to get out of here because um, you're going to get to see them again as we go off the air here. Our premier sponsor, folks, is First National Bank of Eastern Arkansas. Greg and Taylor are awesome down there, and uh, Greg is an alumni, and uh, they, could be not, they could be no more prouder than to support this, uh, this endeavor that they're doing right now. They are our premier sponsor. Bug and Bill of Arkansas, you can see them right here. They are our banner sponsor. Uh, Austin Gonzalez and Jake Gonzalez do an excellent job up there uh, with uh, all your pest control needs. Um, uh, Connor Davis out of Nation R Block in Mississippi County. Ed Harshman, Harshman Reynolds. Roller Swift Funeral Home. Uh, Tyler Dunnigan, council member Tyler, Tyler Dunnigan, is a huge supporter of Osceola Seminole football. We appreciate you so much for coming on as a sponsor, Tyler. And also Farm Bureau Insur- Insurance, Grant Barnett, uh, insurance agent out there. Thank you so much, Grant. Grant's also an alumni. Uh, thank you so much, Grant, for your sponsorship of the Robert Hook Show and the Seminole Nation. Coach, any final words before we get ready to play golf on next week? Go knows. Go knows, Bobby. I think you just got to do more of the same, Coach. I think you keep them pointing that direction, and we're in good shape the rest of the season. Yes, sir. This uh, this Friday night, Seminole Stadium, seven o'clock. We'll be on the air around the six forty-five area on the Seminole Nation Facebook page and the Seminole Nation YouTube page for the live stream. For Coach Robert Hooks, my partner in crime, Bobby Eflin, I am Michael Eflin. Good night on The Robert Hooks Show. <laughs>